right. Well, I'm going to do the best I can after that meal. Uh, I'm feeling a little full and fleshly right now. That's the truth. And that was delicious to uh, uh, my compliments to all the chefs. Uh, so uh, as God has his way of doing occasionally, I had something else I was going to do after lunch. And uh, after a certain subject coming up for like the third or the fourth time, I, I said, okay. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna, um, I, I'm gonna talk, uh, uh, talk about something different uh, uh, today. So uh, if you will, turn with me to Second Corinthians chapter one. sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raised the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you um, just to be here uh, um, amongst brothers and sisters in the Lord. Uh, thank you uh, for the, the, the good spirit that is in this place. And uh, we just ask you to, uh, you know, one more time, just take this old jailbird and the slammer out of the way, Father. Somehow, some way, just uh, um, happy to say something to go on to you and help somebody. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, so uh, actually well, I wanted to start here and just uh, a point in verse 10. Uh, he talked about who delivered us, past tense, uh, from so great a death, and doth deliver, present tense, in whom we yet, that he will yet deliver us. So uh, anyways, we're going to come back to that, but we're going to take a long lap around the block before we actually come back to that. Uh, go with me, if you will, now to Romans, the first chapter. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So I'd like to focus in on verse 20, where it says that uh, the invisible things of Him, all right? Well, who's the Him? The Him's God. Amen. And uh, we know that what? God is a spirit, and uh, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth, okay? So uh, spirit, you can't see spirit. Uh, uh, spirit, spirit, you can see the, the, it's like wind, uh, you can see the effect of spirit, but you can't see spirit with your naked natural eyes. So it says that there are some invisible things of God. Uh, that, and it says that uh, the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Hold on a minute. If something's invisible, how in the world is it clearly seen? That doesn't seem to make any sense right there. That sounds like a contradiction. How in the world can invisible things be clearly seen? Well, we've got to read on a little bit, right? Being understood by the things that are made. Oh, okay. All right. So, in other words, uh, to understand the invisible things of God, uh, we have to look at the things that are made. So I guess what Paul's saying is if we look at what God made, we will be able to see a representation of the invisible things of God in that which he has made or created. Amen? And he goes on and says that even his eternal power and God in it. So he said not only are you going to be able to see some invisible things of God, but specifically you'll be able to see 
the Godhead in everything that God has made. He said, you look at, look at what God has made and there will be, that, that will be his fingerprints in the clay, if you will. You will see a representation of him in everything he made. And then what is the Godhead? Well, that's 1 John 5, 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to do this a bunch of times, so get it the first time. But for these three are one. These three are one. Amen. So God says that uh, we're going to be able to see his Godhead in what he made. And you know, the word Trinity itself is Latin. It's a tri-unity, and it means these three are one. Okay. So <laughs> they say, Trinity is not in the Bible. Well, yeah, but these three are one is, and that's, it, it, that's just the exact same thing in a different language. But these three are one. These three are are one. And uh, I, I call this message, this message our three-dimensional God. Uh, we don't serve a, 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 a two-dimensional God, like, like, a, like a piece of paper. No, our God is three-dimensional, live and in living color. Amen? Uh, he, he, he is who He is, and He's revealed Himself in His creation. So if, they, if we're thinking about what, what God created, well, uh, first of all, Everything, right? He, he, right. Created, he created the universe. The, the universe, right? And so, what is the universe? Well, the universe is time, space, and matter, okay? There are three things, right? But there, it's the universe. But it's time, it's, time is a space, space is a matter, matter, matter is time, but these three are one. The universe, okay? And then we go to each of the elements of the universe. You take, for example, time. What is what is time? Well, time is past, it's present, and it's future. The, the past ain't the present, the present ain't the future, the future, you get the idea. These three are one. These three are one, okay? Space, what is, what, what is space? space? Space is height, width, and depth. The height ain't the width, the width ain't the depth, the depth ain't the depth, the depth, you get the idea. There are three different things, but these three are one thing, they're space. But it's height, width, and depth, but it's space. These three are one, okay? And then we get to matter. Now, matter, matter, we gotta follow some categories here. I got matter for smart folks, and it's matter, matter for simple folks like me, <laughs> amen? So, now, if you're really, in, you're really intelligent here, you may understand that matter consists of energy, motion, and phenomenon. I don't understand that at all, but I read it in a science book. But they're, they're, they're three different things, but they're one thing, and it's matter. Now, you could break down to the smallest particle of matter, which could be like an atom, right? And what is an atom? An atom is electron, neutron, and proton. But it's one thing. It's an atom. That's electron, and, and electron ain't the neutron, the neutron ain't the proton, the proton ain't the But they're one thing. They're the atom. Amen? But for, for, for simple folks like me, I just go with liquid, solid, and gas, okay? The liquid ain't the solid, the solid ain't the gas, but these three are one. So if God created a three-dimensional universe and it can, that, that consists of, of three elements, time, space, and matter, which each are small trinities in themselves, uh, at three at three or one, three or one, three or one, and so yeah, in this in this three dimensional universe that our three dimensional God created, He He put a planet, Amen. And, and, and He called that He called that planet Earth, and and that that planet was a uh, 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 was a uh, Earth 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 Sea and Sky, Amen. And everything on that planet was animal, vegetable, and mineral, Amen. And on that and on that planet, He He put a man. He put a man on that planet. And that man is one man. But uh, I believe there's a verse over there in Thessalonians that, that Paul said, I pray that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus. So a man is a living soul. He has a spirit. And he's in a body. What happened there back there in the garden? God said, let us make man in our image and our likeness. So he takes the dust of the ground and he breathes into the dust of the ground the breath of life, spirit, and man becomes a living soul. So now you've got, you, you, you've never seen me a day in your life. I'm, I'm quoting Dr. Ruckman right now. <coughs> you've never seen me a day in your life because I'm inside of here looking out at you. You've seen my body. You see my body. They said the eyes are the windows to the soul. See, I'm, I'm inside of here. So with each and every man is a body, soul, and spirit for one man. 
the three, the body and the soul, the soul and the body, blah, 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 blah. You got the idea. The three and one, three and one, he said, let us make man in our image. So we got this three-dimensional God, creates a three-dimensional universe, and puts this three-dimensional planet on there, makes that three-dimensional man on there, and things go sideways. Right? <laughs> they go left. They go left real quick. Amen. And uh, and we all know we all know Genesis chapter three. And uh, man man falls. Uh, the the serpent the serpent beguiles Eve, and she takes of the fruit of the tree of life and gave to her husband with her. And man go falls into sin. And as the Bible says, in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And we know they didn't fall over and drop dead like a, a Sleeping Beauty and, and the witch and the apple. The minute they they bit into the thing, that that Adam lived for hundreds of years afterward in his body, but it was his spirit that died. And it is the spirit in man that is in communication with God. And that was that, that was the original, before man fell, that was the original thing, that the God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So it is the spirit of man that is in communication with God. It is the soul of man which is self-conscious, which is with the mind, the will, and the emotion. And then it is the, the body of man, which is world conscious, the seat of the senses, the inter interaction with the world. But when that part, which was God conscious, the spirit of man died, well, then what happens? Well, then, then the soul of man, by default, has to step in and take over. And the soul of man is consumed with self and flees in the flesh. Because the soul of man is married, it's joined, it's connected to this body of sins of the flesh. And so the soul of man is now consumed with following the desires of the flesh and of the mind and is not concerned with God. And that is, that is the fallen man. And so we have, a, we have a triune man, but a fallen triune man. And praise God, we know. We know everyone in this room knows that Jesus Christ came, the perfect sinless Son of God, God manifested in the flesh. Amen. And that he lived the perfect life that we could not live. Amen. And that he went, he went as an atoning sacrifice to Calvary's cross. Hallelujah. And in a moment of time, all sin, past, present, and future of every man, woman, and child that ever lived were judged upon the sinless, perfect Son of God on Calvary's cross Amen. in a moment of time. Hallelujah. Amen. And that blood, that blood that flowed out of his side, it covered all sin. Amen. Anyone, anyone who would open their heart and receive the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ would be saved and would receive the Holy Spirit, would receive the Spirit of God, Amen. would again be able to be God conscious. The Bible says that he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Amen. Amen. You'd be made right with God. You'd be made one with God. Amen. Again. Again. And that happens at a moment of time. That is not a process. That is an event. And it's called Amen. the new birth. Amen. So can I can I top this thing off by getting you to know, Get me to turn back where we were in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. I told you we'd come back. Second Corinthians chapter 1. And it says, Who delivered us from so great a death? And that's what we were just talking about. He delivered us from so great a death. Amen. When in that moment of time where the finished work of Jesus Christ by the Spirit of God, the blood of, the blood of Christ was applied to us and that work of the cross was appointed to us and the Spirit of God came into us and joined with our spirit. He that joined the Lord is one spirit. We were made one in Him. Hallelujah. He came in us and He placed us in Him. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body and made a drink of one spirit. You can look at it like this. You can look at it like taking that, remember the, the message in the bottle? You know, hey, take that message in the bottle bottle and go fill it up with the ocean and put that stopper in and then throw the bottle back in the ocean. That's what Jesus Christ did to you. He filled you up with Him and then He put you in Him. And you you as safe and secure as you could be right there. You know I mean? There's no there's no getting out of that. That's as, as, as we were talking about earlier today. He said, we are already seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That one third of you, that spirit part of you is already in Christ Jesus seated at the right hand of the Father. You're already one third of the way in heaven. Just waiting for the soul and the body to catch up. Amen. So that's a three dimensional salvation 
that our three-dimensional God provided for a three-dimensional man in this three-dimensional planet on this three-dimensional universe. And the first part of that three-dimensional salvation is what he said there, who delivered. That's the past tense. We can use three P's, if you like, to, uh, to and we'll call that the penalty of sin. And that is the operation of justification, all right? When, when, when the work of the cross was applied to you and you were regenerated, you were born again, you were justified and forever, forever delivered from the penalty of sin. That's a wrap. That's a one and done. You can't be, that can't be undone. Amen. And that is in the past tense. That, that, that's done. Okay. So now we move into the next part. And it says, uh, and, and doth deliver. All right. So there's part of this thing that's going on right now. That there's part of this thing that was not an event, but is a process. And it is a it is an event that starts a process, and it's called sanctification. And to sanctify means to set apart for a holy purpose, all right? So well, it was an event in that you were set apart for that holy purpose, but that holy purpose is to be conformed into the likeness of his dear son, and that is a process, that is not an event. That is something that is going on right now. That is something which concerns me, and it concerns you as we sit here in this room today, and that is the part that God needs our cooperation on. Amen. And you could we, you could get in, and, and we don't have time today, but you go over there to, to uh, Romans chapter 6, and you know there's a whole, and I'm, your pastor's probably taught on that, there's a whole no and a reckon and a yield. There's another three right there which will help you in getting on board with God in this process which we call sanctification. Sanctification. And what's happening now in sanctification is we are being delivered from here's your other P from the power of sin. We are being delivered from the power of sin. We've already been delivered from the penalty of sin. We are today being delivered from the very power of sin. But but you got but you got to be with the program. Amen. That, this thing ain't automatic. It, you have to Die to yourself daily. You have to yield to the indwelling Holy Spirit. You have, this takes this takes a conscious effort on our part. And I'm here to I'm here to tell you this one that it it, it 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 it's you know it's like it's like going up the down escalators. All right, you go into a, a mall and you go up the down escalator and you just stop. You're going down. You if you stop, you're going down. And that and, and that is that the battle that we have with our flesh each and every day. The flesh lusts against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh. And in, in this process that we're in right now, sanctification, God's cooperating in and with us, but but He needs our cooperation in this part of this thing. And it's going on right now. It's not a one and done, it's not it's not automatic, but praise God. Philippians 1 6, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it under the day of Jesus Christ. And so then we get to the third part. Amen? And that's, what does he say? And in whom we trust. Why do we trust? Unless I catch that faith. Why do we trust? Because it ain't happened yet. <laughs> in whom we trust that he will. Yet deliver us. This is what your pastor was talking about today. There's a part of you that ain't saved. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what you're sitting in on that pew right now. That's this old mess right here. That's this stinking flesh. And, and if I may, uh, uh, it, it, borrowing from the words of my good friend, uh, evangelist Cliff Taylor, Cliff Taylor would tell you that the flesh is wicked! That's a good Taylor for you. <laughs> this flesh is wicked, man. I'll tell you, that's, that's, that's the worst enemy you got in life. I wake up in the morning, I look in that mirror, I say, what are you up to, you rascal? I was watching you. Huh? All my problems get, hey, the devil don't give me too hard of a time. I give myself a much harder time than the devil ever does. Believe that. But see, one day that's not going to be the case, hallelujah. One day, hallelujah, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, this corruptible must put on incorruptible, hallelujah. Amen. In a moment of time, Amen. I will be changed. There'll Amen. be no more sin. Amen. There'll be no more wicked flesh. Amen. There'll be no more struggle. There'll Amen. be 
nothing but God's pure holiness. When we see Him, we will be like Him. For we will know Him as He is. Hallelujah. And we're going to be in bodies just like the Lord Jesus Christ. Just like the body that He came out. Just he came out of the tomb in. Hallelujah. Go to heaven at the speed of thought. Walk through walls, but we still enjoy a fish dinner. Amen. I mean, we're gonna have bodies like that. They said like the angels in heaven. Amen. I mean, it's gonna be, it's gonna be wonderful. It's gonna be beautiful. And in that day, in that day, and that day's coming soon. Amen. I'll tell you what, Amen. if you know, if you know your book, you know that day is coming soon. He's looking up. No man knows the day or the hour, but he said we would know the season. Amen. And he said we are not as those that sleep that that day should over overtake us. Amen. No, we 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 know because we know the book. We can look around us at the world today, and we can see all of the elements in place. I mean, you've got Israel's back in the land. You've got a revived Roman Empire. You've got the Gog and Magog on the move. You, you've got the kings of the east going. You've got the Islamic nations of, uh, up with the Arabs and North Africa uh, uh, getting ready and, and moving there. You've got, you've got Sodom and Gomorrah all over again across the world. I mean, listen, sometimes I'm like, God, hello. I'm here. I mean, it's, it, this time is coming soon. And the Bible says... That in the last trump, the dead in Christ shall rise. Uh, the, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. And in that moment, they said, we go, we go, we're going to get a brand new body. Praise Hallelujah. Yeah. Jesus yeah. said back there in John, he was going to go prepare a place for us. He said, if it wasn't true, he wouldn't have told us that. Amen. Right. He said, he's going he's to come and, and get us and take us to that place that he's prepared for us. So that's obviously, as you said, that is the mystery of the rapture. That's not what was... Uh, Jesus was talking about in Matthew chapter 4, Luke, Luke 21, or, or Mark 14. That's, that's, that's the regathering of Israel to Jerusalem on earth. That is, that's not Jesus taking us to, to the mansions of, of New Jerusalem in heaven, but that's the mystery. That's the mystery of the rapture. That's the body of Christ, the church. He's coming to get us, and when he does, hallelujah. This corruptible is gone, and we, we get incorruption, we get that new body, hallelujah, and we will once and for all be delivered from the very presence of sin. Amen. Amen. Here's the third P. From the, for all eternity, forevermore and evermore, delivered from the very presence of sin, and that's glorification. Amen. That's glorification, hallelujah. And what and that's and that's when your salvation's finished. Amen. Amen. So until then. Part of it's done, part of it's being done, and we look forward. And we look forward. That's Amen. our blessed hope, hallelujah. That's what we got to keep our eyes on. See, that'll make, that'll make the part that we're going through right now a lot easier if we'll keep our eyes on that last part. Amen. See, that glorification. That we, 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 we're working towards something. We, we, that's called a blessed hope. You know, we got we got a, we got a reward at the at the end, man. I mean, when you when you in a race, man, you can keep your eye you can keep your eye on the on that uh, on that on that ribbon down there, man. You're headed for something, man. Don't look down. Look up. Keep your eye on the prize. Keep going. And it's in these last and evil days, it can get discouraging. Cause I mean, I go I go to churches all over, all over. And and look, our churches are small. Now, Joe Osteen got a big church. Stephen Furtick got a big church. You know, Cliff Low Dollar got a big church, right? But then you're not. They're not. They're not teaching and preaching the truth. But when you when you go to uh, our folks, huh? Our 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 group, our crowd, churches are small, and they're getting and they're getting smaller, and that could be discouraging. That could be discouraging. Unless we keep our eyes on the prize, and we know and we know that the Bible said, "Hey," and the closer it gets, that had to happen. It had to happen. That it had to happen. There was going to be a great falling away. There was going to be a land to see and apostasy. There was going to be a time where the, the harvest was just down to gleanings. It just, it just went over here. Just one. And just <laughs> one over here. You know, a little bit here. Listen, and that can be discouraging. Because like, we're not seeing the big revivals of, of, the, of the days of, of, of Wesley and Whitfield and, and what have you. I mean, it's, it's, no, that, the, the big harvest is over. It's just the gleanings. But take heart. Take heart, my friend. Because that just lets you know that when you see all these things come to pass, 
Look up. Your redemption's gone nigh. So, look, man, it, it may be round number 12 of the fight, and you've been down two or three times, and you're tired, and you don't think you've got another round in you. Hey, man, just... Sir, they, them old bodies hurting. Uh, I'm tired. Uh, I, I've been doing this for so long. I'm discouraged. I'm disappointed. I'm bored. I, I, I mean, yeah, hey, just that, take another deep breath. Yeah, let, come back to the corner. Let, 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 the, let your uh, trainer slap Amen. you around a little bit. Amen. Get down on your knees and, and let that Holy Ghost wake you up a little bit for, for that, last, that last minute there in the ring because it's almost over. Amen. It's almost Amen. over. Stay encouraged. We have not much farther to go because, hallelujah, we serve a great God, a three-dimensional God who made a three-dimensional universe and put a three-dimensional planet there and put a three-dimensional man on that planet and gave him a three-dimensional salvation and the whole ball of wax is just about over. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord.